Um, I want to talk about FDA and uh, much, if not everything, that I've learned about FDA. I've learned based on the research done by Robert Higgs, the author of this wonderful and terrifying book, Crisis and Leviathan. It's an important book. Read it. Um, Higgs has spent a lot of time studying the FDA and the effects that that particular regulatory agency of the government uh, has had on the lives of people. And uh, his argument, or rather his position, goes as follows. FDA is responsible for numerous deaths. FDA is a horrible, horrible institution that should be abolished because its effect is it's leading to people dying by the hundreds of thousands by preventing people from consuming medical services and goods such as uh, synthetic drugs, medical devices by disallowing those products onto the market by stopping companies from manufacturing, marketing and distributing uh, those drugs and medical devices to the market to the willing consumers, the FDA is responsible for numerous deaths. Let's explore this a little bit. What does FDA do? FDA approves or disapproves medical goods and services. A drug, medical device, uh, it's got to be approved by the FDA in order for anybody to be able to buy it or to sell it. Um, the rationale behind it is like this. We have to make sure, says the FDA, that the drug is safe as in its toxicity or other risk factors are not too serious, whatever the standard is, and also that it's efficient, as in it, it actually does what the drug company says that it does. Those standards are, are there's no non-arbitrary way to say or to determine that a particular drug is either safe or efficient or both. So FDA uses arbitrary uh, thresholds and arbitrary procedures to determine, quote-unquote, what the safety and the efficacy should be of a particular medical good. But what happens is, um, let's, let's look at the nature of that particular intervention. And once we do, I'm sure that it's going to be apparent to you how horrible and dangerous this institution is. First of all, there is nothing in this world that is absolutely and 100% safe. Nothing is safe. Okay, Cars are not safe. They can be safer than other cars, but they're not safe. Knives are not safe. Nail guns are not safe. And no drugs are safe. I mean, any drug, even aspirin, if you take too much of it, you'll become very, very sick. You know, painkillers, ibuprofen, you know, my, my favorite painkiller is Advil, which is essentially ibuprofen. You're not supposed to take more than X number of pills a day. If you do, you'll get sick, you may die. Is ibuprofen safe? Well, it depends. You know, it depends on the dosage, it depends on the condition, it depends on my predisposition to a certain reaction to this particular drug. So there's no non-arbitrary way to say objectively, once and for all, for all situations and people, that, you know, XYZ drug is safe. There may be people that are not tolerant to the particular ingredients in a certain drug that shouldn't take that drug. Um, efficient? Well, again, by what standard? Um, some people are helped by medicine. Other people are not helped by the same medicine. Some people may have genetic conditions that you know uh, render certain drugs inefficient when those people take them. Others don't have those conditions. So if, you, if you're going to have one decision point where somebody's going to, you know, throw the switch and say, "Okay, it's safe," you know, that's that's not doing anything. I mean, it's it's still unsafe for those people for whom it's unsafe. Um, but the other part of the rationale for FDA and what it does is, well, you know, we do a service for people. We determine for them what is safe for them. Uh, but think about think about risks involved in in doing anything. I mean, there are always risks. There are always trade-offs, right? Um, when you take a certain drug, you're risking consequences, you're risking side effects. There are no drugs, no drugs known to man, 
that don't have side effects in particular dosages for particular people. So there's always a uh, potential side effect that could be detrimental to you. Now, who's going to determine uh, whether the benefits outweigh the risks? Or, in economic terms, whether the benefits outweigh the costs? The thing about benefits and costs, and what I'm going to say now is completely and absolutely true, always and forever, for everybody. Benefits, just as costs, are always subjective. Always subjective. Value derived from a particular good is subjective to the user of that good. Value only exists in your mind. There is no such thing as objective value in any economic good. Same goes for costs, because costs... Um, Oh, a lot of people, you know, have this uh, bookkeeping kind of accounting kind of uh, concept of costs as in some kind of monetary value. No, um, economics, Austrian economics teaches that um, since you know, by virtue of being humans and living in this physical universe, we can only do one thing at a time. By doing any particular action at any particular point in time, we're foregoing or giving up all the alternative courses of actions that we could have taken. And the cost is always what is called an opportunity cost, meaning the next best thing that you're foregoing in order to take a particular course of action in this moment in time. When we buy a movie ticket, we're foregoing the next best use for those ten dollars that we pay for the movie ticket. Same goes for an ice cream cone, same goes for um, whatever, but also it's not just a, a foregone monetary cost, it's also the cost of time. You're, you know, if you're buying a movie ticket, you're risking uh, being bored by the movie and then regretting having spent two hours uh, on that film that you really didn't enjoy, right? Um, so you may end up with a psychic benefit if you like the movie, or with a psychic loss if you hated the movie, right? Um, same goes for food that you take. Uh, food that you eat, you, you may get a food poisoning, and that is going to be your cost. Uh, in addition to the foregone opportunities of, you know, spending the same money, you know, instead of spending it on that, uh, you know, salmon steak, you could have spent it on something else, some other food or, or a non-food item. And you can also be harmed by, subjectively harmed by that food. Maybe you hated its taste and, you know, this, you have this horrible taste in your mouth for the rest of the day and you, you know, you, you, you hate that salmon steak for, for that. Uh, you may get food poisoning. Who knows, you know? Maybe you have an allergic reaction that you weren't aware of. Your body responds in a certain way. So those are costs. Now those costs are subjective just as benefits are subjective. And the thing that FDA, the claim that FDA makes is that it helps, it makes this determination that the benefits of using a particular drug outweigh or don't outweigh the risks or the costs of using that drug. But how can a third party make that determination? We're going we're gonna to explore this claim that they make that FDA does a service to society by stopping people from using unsafe and uh, inefficient drugs. Stopping those drugs from coming to the market. We're going to explore this claim from two points of view. One, they can't know the risks and benefits. The risks and the benefits are only known by the subjective user, by the consumer. Let's say you're a patient suffering from uh, a very severe illness. And there's a drug out there that its creator's claim could help you. Do you know that it's going to help you? No, you don't know that. Nobody, in fact, you know, a lot of times people are not making that claim. The drug manufacturer is not making that claim. They may be saying, well, this drug has shown some promising results in trials and, you know, it may help you. Well, what if you've tried everything else and you're still dying and there is no cure that you're aware of other than that drug? Who's to say that you shouldn't take it other than you and your family and your doctor? You know, your doctor is acting as an advisor, is providing you with information. If you don't like that doctor's opinion, you can go for a second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion, doesn't matter. You know, you can listen to whoever you want to listen to, but uh, uh, then you talk to your family and you make a decision. Do you want to take this risky drug that you don't know a lot about, maybe? 
and risk severe side effects or risk not taking the drug. So there's actually two types of risks. The risk of using the drug and the risk of not using the drug. Who's going to be, be, the, to be the best judge of which action to take? I think it's the patient. I think it's the, it's the, uh, the consumer. Since expected benefits and costs and risks are subjective by nature, by, by, by their, their very nature, there's no way a third party can determine that a particular course of action, you know, the, the, the risks associated with a particular course of action outweigh the benefits or vice versa. The benefits outweigh the risks or the costs. There's no way you can know this. There is no interpersonal comparison of value. It's not possible. Value is inside of your mind. It's not measurable, it's not observable by other people. So no third party can make a determination that a particular drug or a medical device is too risky for you. They don't know what too risky for you is. Only you can determine what risks you're willing to take and what trade-offs, potential trade-offs and risks you're willing to live with. So um, this is a very important point. This is a very important point. The third party is not capable, theoretically and practically, is not capable of determining what risks consumers should or shouldn't take. And secondly, let's talk about incentives. And Higgs uh, gives a brilliant exploration of those incentives in his various speeches and articles on the subject. Look him up. Just go Google Higgs, H-I-G-G-S, F-D-A. You'll find lots of good materials. Um, let's talk about incentives. What, you know, even if they could determine those costs and risks objectively, think of the incentives that drive the behavior of an, of an FDA bureaucrat. There are more than one type of risk in this equation. There's a risk of letting an unsafe drug onto the market, as in you're the FDA, you certify a certain drug, drug XYZ as safe, and then people start dying from taking it. That's a risk, right? Um, a risk of the drug being too toxic, for example. There's also the other risk, the risk of not letting a drug onto the market, a drug that could potentially save lives. What happens is somebody is left without that drug and they die because there is no other cure to the particular disease that they have. So the risk of use and the risk of non-use. So two distinct types of risks. Think about the incentives that drive the behavior of an FDA bureaucrat. If you keep a drug from the market, then by definition, the drug never enters the market. Nobody's going to take that drug. Nobody's going to die from taking that drug. No media is going to be on your case. And the FDA will receive no negative publicity. Right? People may be dying from you know, lack of access to that drug, and there are documented cases of drugs being available on markets other than the United States for years and saving people's lives, and that drug being kept from the market by the FDA on the U in the U.S. for years, sometimes, you know, decades sometimes. People dying by the tens and hundreds of thousands from those diseases that were successfully treated by that drug elsewhere. Those people died as a direct result of, of FDA action, of FDA stopping that drug from you know, being available to the U.S. Uh, market, to the U.S. consumers. Beta blockers. Look up beta blockers. Uh, I don't remember which countries it was first uh, available in, but it was not available in the U.S. for a very, very long time, even though it was successfully being used by patients um, in many countries all over the world. 
But the FDA kept it from the market for, for many years, and tens and hundreds of thousands of people died from cardiovascular illnesses. But those are invisible deaths. It's difficult to attribute those deaths to the FDA, action or inaction. So they don't have any; they don't get any, ne any negative publicity from those invisible deaths, right? Any bureaucrat, every bureaucrat, their first instinct is to preserve their job. They they will not risk putting their job on the line. So uh, Higgs talks about two types of errors. Uh, one error is letting an unsafe drug on the market. And the second type of error is not letting a safe drug on the market. Which one do you think FDA is going to lean towards? FDA is going to tend very heavily towards the second course of action. They will keep drugs from the market to avoid negative publicity from potential risky consequences or, or, or um, potential disastrous consequences of somebody um, taking a drug that's too toxic for them. Right? Even if so, even if they knew what was really risky and what was really efficient. Oh, by the way, efficiency is another thing. Most drugs, more than half of drug use, uh, medical uh, pharmaceutical drug use in the in the U.S. today is off-label, meaning it's being used to treat things other than the things that was originally marketed as being a cure for. Okay. Um, that means that at the time that FDA approved the drug, they didn't know. They didn't have the information on what it was going to be helpful for, that particular drug. Again, off-label use accounts for more than, more than half of all pharmaceutical drug use in the United States. There's your efficiency you know, going right out of the window right there. Um, so Higgs is saying, even if they knew, even if they could determine what drugs are safe and efficient, they wouldn't want to let those drugs on the market because the risk is more, you know, is, is something that they're not willing to live with. The risk of, you know, having some kind of tragedy or, or some incident being attributed to their action. Therefore, they're going to tend very heavily towards the second type of error, the non-action. Right? I'm not even talking about, um, I'm not even going to talk about the fact that, uh, the FDA approval process, which, for example, does not recognize uh, the uh, track record a particular drug has outside the United States. You have to do clinical trials in the U.S. Information on how this tr drug is being used right now in Sweden or Norway or the United, United Kingdom cannot be used, is not used by the FDA as a basis for making their decisions to let the drug, on, drug onto the market. So that process has lengthened, lengthened the R and D and marketing uh, the R and D process for pharmaceutical drugs to, to more than ten years on average. So I've heard different figures, but you know ballpark figures: ten years and three billion dollars. That's how much it costs to put a drug on the market. Think of all the drugs that didn't get developed because the pharmaceutical companies and and. Again, you know, only the largest pharmaceutical companies can afford that kind of process. And the smaller ones, would, you know, the smaller companies tend to be more innovative and, and they tend to come up with new solutions, radical solutions, and radical developments uh, more often than bigger companies. But they simply can't afford this lengthy and, and tremendously expensive process. And so they abandon certain lines of research because it simply isn't going to pay they will go out of business. They risk going out of business by pursuing certain lines of R&D um, and therefore a lot of drugs end up not being developed and not being uh, brought to market. So in short, you know, look into this. FDA is killing people every day. FDA is driving mergers in the pharmaceutical industry. It's creating monsters and it's killing people by withholding life-saving drugs and medical devices from patients who should be the ones determining which risks they're willing to take and which risks they're not willing to take based on their own personal tolerance for risk, their own personal situation, their own, their own personal you know, uh, physiology, psychology, and family situation, and other available options. FDA is evil and it should be abolished.